Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. Yep, love that voice. That means I get my man Jacob Padilla live and in poison. How about that? As we welcome you back for another week of Nebraska Preps post game, lot, lot, a lot to recap. It was busy, right? Which we're, we're spread out. We had California. We have Kansas City. We had wait. Where were Supreme, or not the Supreme Girls, uh, uh, the other national champs gold, where were they? Uh, in the Brass Brass Attack. Is, yeah. Where were, where were the attack? I, I don't even know where all these tournaments were, to be honest. I was in Kansas City. I was following along with the results and seeing teams do well, but I don't even know where they were. How, how's your head? Have you recovered from it? Like, <laughs> you're, you're covering pressers. You're doing stories. You've got basketball. We good? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, down there for all four days in Kansas City. Um, pretty big tournament, so a lot of basketball, and then came right back and dived right into uh, football media days and stuff. We got first practice on Friday, so um, we're kind of at, at the end of the summer here. Uh, this is kind of the last big weekend uh, of summer basketball we'll, we'll touch on today, and then we'll start transitioning into football here moving forward. Yeah, so it's interesting, right? You, you, had, uh, you had the Peach Jam going on, and you, you had – uh, the three SSB, their open championship, which 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 is in Seal Beach, uh, ETG, the 16s, uh, the only team here locally uh, out of that organization that was playing in the open championship. They qualified to basically be playing on the platinum circuit, um, and a, and a pretty good showing. I think it was a team, Jacob. If I had to be completely honest, I think they ran out of gas. Um, you know, the, the, their style of play lends itself to pressure, uh, and they've got to shoot it well. And I think as the tournament waned, it wasn't necessarily the caliber of competition, although I believe the first loss to Indiana Elite, that's a really, really good basketball team. So I, I Talking with somebody that really follows this stuff, uh, he thinks that they might be the best 16 year team in the country. Yeah. And that, that was a 10-point loss. Yeah. Like, that's nothing to <laughs> – and, and you know what? They had every opportunity – I would probably I'm probably inclined to agree with that. That they're a really complete team. They shot it well. They took fairly good care of the basketball. I didn't love their guards, but what they made up for in ball handling, uh, they did it with shots and and they shot it from three. They have they were big in the post. They've got good size in the paint, and I think that game boiled down to them being able to get easy shots. Offensive rebounds and putbacks. They just couldn't control the post. And that's a little bit, um, again, last loss I saw was that uh, Howard Poley team way back in the spring. And it was kind of the same deal where you guys just couldn't clean the glass. Um, they got too many easy, easy buckets down the stretch after um, ETG got the lead. So, um, yeah, they got Cooper Cook committed to Iowa. Um, Flory Badunga is one of the fastest risers in the country. Shot up to five-star, big 6'9 kid. Yeah, he was um, a handful. Tough matchup for, for you guys uh, as kind of your team is constructed. But, again, you performed as well as anybody just based on the results and getting to where you did. Yeah, they were really, really good. I felt like, especially for a team that didn't shoot the ball, um, probably from, from Wednesday on. I don't. They missed some really good open looks. And, I mean, listen, if you're a guy, and, um, you know, like Kevin Stubblefield, who is really the only guy that gets – back to the basket buckets that shows you some sort of a post game. Um, and he's 6'3". <laughs> yeah. You had to really have him play well against Indiana Elite, and I felt like that was one of the few games in which he just kind of outright struggled, did not get a lot of help from his backcourt mates uh, in terms of making shots. Um, and and I think they ran they, – they, they, they simply ran out of gas, but a heck of a showing – for that team, who as as you know, if they get a big, uh, they'll probably tinker with a piece or two on that team. You get a big. That is a that is a national championship caliber team. Well, and set the goal at the start. Going to play your way into this deal, into this open cha- uh, open tournament. Yeah. And even, despite losing one of your best players, it's exactly what you guys did and made some noise when you got there. Ran through the Adidas Gold, proved that. Uh, this team was too good for that level and, and earned their chance to go play against the best and uh, performed well. Yeah, I mean, it was the who's who. I think, you know, semifinals, you saw the Utah, the prospects. You saw Indiana Elite. It was ETG. Um, you had uh, – who did Utah prospects play against? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. It was either – was it – oh, it was uh, Southern Assault. Um, another good – 
you know, grassroots program. They started out with a win against the Atlanta Celtics, which was pretty impressive, and that was kind of the springboard. But I think ultimately what doomed those guys was the inability to get easy buckets in the paint. The transition game, they could get downhill. I didn't have any problems getting to the glass. Did, didn't really finish around the 10. Not enough free throw attempts for that team, and they didn't shoot the three ball well. Yeah. And it seemed like you had a lot of different guys kind of stepped up throughout the weekend. Even some guys coming off the bench played some big roles. I know yeah. Isaiah McMorris had a big run. Elijah Gates sounds like he played well. And when those guys play well, to go with kind of your more consistent players, um, yeah, it was you guys it tough. was it was really sporadic. They didn't get McMorris until Thursday, and he had a string. It was forty six thirty eight. Um, Benning had a steal in the corner. He threw it out ahead. Easy look. McMorris finished. There was a th- the very next time down the court, there was a kind of a scramble. McMorris sprints to the corner. I think Caleb gets in the paint. He kicks it out yeah. to him for a corner three. That cut it to one. Uh, and then the very next time down, loose hands again. He gets a deflection. McMorris gets out and runs. He finishes it. It was his own 7-0 yeah. run, and it gave them the one-point lead that forced the timeout, which I think changed the trajectory yeah. of that game. But, you know um, – I think shot selection is really big for them. Those those moments you, you mentioned, Eli, um, he had a nice little traffic dunk. He showed a little bit of his pull-up game. But takes a high degree of difficulty of shots, um, which I thought kind of hampered this team in general. It wasn't just Eli. You know, it was you know, Jaden Jackson was unusually cool from behind the arc, missed what he would probably call some good open looks, and really couldn't get – Neil Moss are going either from from distance, and, and that's always tough. Like uh, even good teams have cold weekends. Heck, yeah. uh, my my team down in Kansas City couldn't couldn't make a shot all weekend. We we won a game making one three, and that's not not really typically. Yeah, that how we is play, very so. interesting for your yeah. team and and how you're built. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get to Kansas City in a in a minute, but um, yeah, it was certainly an experience down there this weekend, just based on the, the officiating and the style of play, but. Yeah, they they let these guys play in Seal Beach. They're wearing a ton of whistles, especially later on in that tournament. I, I felt like the officials, and it was a three-man or three-person crew because uh, there were a lot of female officials, and I thought they did an outstanding job as a whole. Um, it, it was it was well done. That that was a heck of a that was a heck of a showing for ETG. Yeah, and. On the girls' side, uh, ETG Midwest uh, ma- made a strong run a- as well. On the started the day after they they really that's a good basketball team, <laughs> yeah. and it, and it was more they proved it could be more than just Brit Prince, yeah. right? She's fantastic. She'll have just about every offer there is to have at the Division <laughs> One level, you know, short of a handful of teams. But yeah. at, at this point, yeah, it's basically waiting on. Uh, uh, UConn and South Carolina, and yeah. everybody else who has an offer is like, yeah, we've got no shot. We're not even going to waste our time. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, right? I mean, she has arrived on the national scene. She's, she made the open invite uh, to the select camp. So, I mean, that 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 is a really, really good basketball team, and they made a run in that tournament to the championship without arguably their, their second-best player. Yeah. Um, Kennedy Williams has been out for um, July, and – um, still, they they made it that far. And it's good to see her make the trip. Yeah, it, it's always cool when you get to see the injured players be able to be around with their team, even if they can't be on the court. Um, obviously, there's a lot going into the the travel and all that, so it's good to see um, them be able to be together as a team. But uh, I think most people saw at this point the Brit Prince game winner and uh, to send them to the championship. Um, just kind of. 25 foot pull up, which is yeah. definitely within her range. Uh, She's described icy. a little bit more than uh, a little deeper than that in the initial tweet. Uh, the video didn't quite match up, but still um, well beyond the the, the the high school three point line. And but again, we both seen her shoot that shot with um, without any problem. So yeah. you just can't range, let her get range, to that spot. Range for days, as the kids like to say, right? Yeah, probably should have thrown a second defender at her or something like that. You, you knew she was going to be the one taking that shot, and uh, she knocked it down. So. Heck of a run by them. Again, really good team. Um, they hardly lost, and a couple of their losses came playing up at the 17U level. Um, so just really fantastic uh, summer season for, for that whole team. And uh, obviously Ann Prince coaching there does a great job. Um, kind of 
she's been coaching Britt all the way up through and uh, and some of her teammates and uh, it's it's been a really really successful team kind of mirroring uh, what the we've had on we had on the boys side with that ETG just kind of dominating their age group all, all the way up so um, good, good weekend for ETG out there in those championships. We, we've got a national champion uh, here among our ranks, the Nebraska Tech 15U team. Uh, went up there and won the UAA national championships at the 15U level. Um, that's uh, Avril Smith and Sarah Harley from Miller North, Elsa Vedrill from Wahoo Newman, and uh, a lot of other talented players. So um, impressive run by them. Uh, that's a great job. I mean, anytime you win uh, a national championship at any level, that's impressive. And uh, now we've got a championship coming back to Nebraska. It's pretty impressive on the national level, right? And and I like the fact, Jacob, one of the reasons why I like doing these podcasts and, and just like whether it's our show in general at, at, at Sharp and Benning or whatever is I don't – it doesn't matter to either one of us where these kids go to school, what the affiliation is, what the class is, they're ours, right? And we're just talking Nebraska high school athletics. They're just easy kids, I think, to cheer for. And it, and it helps tell the story, right? It's Nebraska is rapidly earning their respect on the national level. I mean, heck, Hunter South just got invited to another open camp. Um, at at Gonzaga, you know, Chucky Hepburn's gonna ha- have a chance to be a three or four year starter, um, at the University of Wisconsin. Like, even though it's not a a state school or, or Creighton or Omaha or somewhere, that just to continue to be able to tell these stories of what these kids are doing on the national level at such a young age, I think it's fun to talk about. Yeah, and again, just looking around, that the Nebraska um, Supreme Girls made made good run uh, in their tournament. Um, it's kind of looking at the, the boys, Nebraska Supreme. It looks like the, the 15s had the most successful summer over there for them, uh, going 11 and five in the UAA, um, 17, 16s, both around 500, uh, but had to deal with injuries, guys in and out of the lineup all season. Um, they, uh, picked up Tay Moore from Lincoln Southeast for the 17s to play up this weekend, uh, and just because of some injuries that they had that kind of ran out that roster. So, um, Pretty good uh, summer all around for uh, our, our teams in the various parts of the country. Um, I, I was down in Kansas City, like I mentioned, um, for the Hardwood Classic and Sunflower Showcase. Cause they kind of combined those two tournaments into one to just make one giant four-day tournament uh, and kind of focus everybody in one place. Um, overall, uh, pretty good. I mentioned the, the officiating. I honestly, it was the worst I've seen it in terms of officials doing their jobs. And to be fair, they had the same groups of officials on the, uh, on the courts all day long. So you had refs doing like 13 games. Like they had guys rotating in and out, but like you, it was this, you came back the next day and it was the same exact guys on the same court and they were there all day long. Um, I got a group the last day, uh, last game of the day on Friday. And, um, it be they were doing three officials on the big courts downstairs, and um, apparently an official got hurt in the game before, so we only had two for our game. Neither of these guys got above a slow walk. Neither no, crossed no, half court just, the entire just, game. There was no crazy. rotation. There was one possession where um, the guy on this our ha- our side of the court never got past the end of my bench while on his side. So. Um, up the left sideline, a kid stepped way out of bounds, attacked the basket, jumped up to shoot it. We were there. He ended up dropping it down, uh, never touched us. He went and got it, picked it up. They kicked it out. They hit a three on that. Mm-hmm. No call. The guy, again, never got past the end of my bench that it should have been his call. So <laughs> it's like possessions like that. And guys, man, I, there, there's, there's letting them play, and then there's not doing your jobs. And I felt like much of the weekend on a lot of those courts – the officials weren't doing their jobs. Uh, it was brutal what they were letting go. Mm. It wasn't even basketball that's not, a lot of times. You know what's it's, interesting to hear you say? That's not even really your style normally. No. I, you know, you're kind of used usually, and I've seen some of the, like, it's about as negative as you'll yeah. get is the wave off, right? Yeah. Like, okay. But typically you kind of stay, you stay in pocket. Yeah. Like, that. it, it was, again, we, we pulled out that game on Friday night despite making 1-3, despite uh, the fishing that I was talking about. Um, and... It was 
again, anytime you've got like guys yanking on arms when you're trying to shoot the ball when it's a play on, you got guys running into guys' backs on layups and it's a play on. I, I don't understand like what you're seeing as officials to to let that kind of stuff go. Mm-hmm. And uh, at one point he told me. Well, we can't see everything. I was like, we'll see something. That game was 14-7 to 7 fouls against us. Mm-hmm. And we weren't even as aggressive on defense as they were in terms of getting up and hacking and stuff uh, on the ball uh, out on the perimeter. So, like, I, I just – there was no consistency. Um, it, it was just hard, hard to watch much of the games this weekend. I, I just don't understand. Like, it's hard to evaluate basketball. That Like, you got all these coaches there, and you're just seeing guys, kids kill each other. Um, like how are you supposed to be able to judge skill and talent when it's just a foul fest mm-hmm. and it's a play on? So yeah. that that was the, the game was kind of getting mucked up for yeah. you. Yeah, um, but um, regardless, um, got all, got all the games in and finished. Uh, two teams from Nebraska went down and went four and zero. Had great weekends in their pools. Um, start with the Adidas Gold Seventeen U, which that's a team that it took some lumps this year. Yeah. They, they really struggled, down to seven guys. Um, they really had a great weekend, and it started with Alec Noonan, who just was phenomenal this weekend. Yeah. Uh, he s- uh, scored 24 a game, I believe. He scored 28, 28, 26 in his last three I games. Saw your, I saw your stat line yeah. on him, and you're not really a hyperbole guy. As a matter of fact, I think you go just the opposite. It takes a ton yeah. to kind of impress you, but when you call that one of the better performances that you've seen – over that stretch, and you look at him statistically, just the efficiency, it's not the volume, yeah. the efficiency in which he, he shot the basketball. Yeah, and I, I tracked three of those games. I wasn't there for the first 28-point game. Uh, I just heard from his mom what he scored in that game, and my brother was watching a little bit said he was hooping. But in, in the three games that I watched, which, again, didn't even include that 28-point game, 22, 23 a game on 73% shooting, including 6 to 10 from three. Uh, he and watching that last game, he was playing with such a uh, high level of confidence. It's getting to his pull up uh, whenever he wanted to, knocking it down, hitting threes, getting to the rim like he normally does. He's a guy that uh, he had an ankle injury, I believe it was, that cost him a lot of June early. And early in July, you could see that the burst just wasn't there. He wasn't quite what he had. We been. saw it against the ETG 16s, yeah. right? Just didn't really have yeah. the ability to kind of change direction and get downhill. He did this weekend. He looked really healthy, and there wasn't anybody that could guard him down there in Kansas City. So, Isn't uh, it weird how when you, you're close to him, he's a big, strong guard. Physically, he's more impressive up close than I think people give him credit for in street clothes. He's got a nice frame. Yeah, and uh, Concordia was there watching courtside and offered him the next day. Um, so, um, yeah, good good weekend for Alec Noon in the, the Gold 17s again. To, to finish 4-0 after kind of a rough season with guys in and out, shorthanded. Um, I, I was happy for those guys to, to close it out that way. And then Omaha e- easy Lee. Easy team to root for, too, because... I'm a little biased. I like their coach. (laughs) (laughs) And then Omar Elite. He does a good job. Omar Elite, 16U, went 4-0 as well. And um, They're starting to garner some buzz, aren't they? Later on in the summer, it's like they have some folks' attention. And that's a team that – it's a good team. had a good run. They – with, with Dale Ron Thomas and, and, and Strong. Yeah, Miner Strong, Quentin McCaffrey. The, the last game of the weekend was their most competitive by far, and it was physical. Like there were Which is five, the way that they're capable of playing. There were five technicals plus an intentional, I think, between the two teams. Um, and, but they, they ended up pulling it down the stretch. Quentin McCaffrey, game-winning three-pointer mm-hmm. with a few seconds left. Um, and he, he's a guy that uh, he, he's impressed me. I think he's gotten a lot better. Um, hit two threes in that game, including the game winner. Um, he had uh, earlier in the weekend. He had, he had a really good game. Dale Ron had a really good game in the middle. Uh, minor was active. He's so long. Got a couple of dunks where you just see. It's not even like he's jumping that high. He just extends and is able to get the ball over the rim almost effortlessly. Mm. Um, Keelan Bennett from Miller North, I, I thought, had some really good games this weekend. Played well. Uh, Kevon Newsom, like it, it's a really solid team. They go 11 deep uh, on that team. Devin Holman got injured early in the weekend, so they were down to 10. But um, that was an impressive team. They, they they played well this weekend, and again, just kind of the balance. Different guys, at, at, in, depending on the matchup, are capable uh, of stepping up. Um, so those were the two that um, went uh, undefeated. 
Um, uh, powerhouse uh, Skirka went three and one um, with a win over uh, Lincoln Supreme Harms. Um, so their top national team there. And uh, man, Martell Evans had 40 points in their first game that I watched. Uh, Everybody, so it's funny, right? I'm, we're paying attention to what's going on in California, and and my my 12 year old Micah, he goes just out of nowhere. He's like, Dad, I can't remember what what did you think about Martel Evans? Was that the guy that he said he calls you my buddy? You you and your buddy were talking about before last season, and I was like, Oh yeah, I said you know. Jacob was pretty high on him. He was coming off a really good summer, and he was a guy to watch. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And he goes, Dad, I I, I think I saw on Instagram he 40-pieced the team. I go, whoa. <laughs> like, that, so, that's where this is coming from, huh? 40 and 10, and he had 36 in the final minute and then dunked it twice to get to 40. <laughs> and the last one, they chucked, like, they wanted to get him there. Chucked it. He went up high pointing the ball over a defender took it in and dunked it, like just dunked it through the kid yeah. uh, to get the 40 piece. Like he, he wanted it and he, there wasn't anything the defender was going to do to stop him. So um, yeah, just a really powerful athlete. He's going Juco um, next season. Um, and Keandre Perkins had, had some good stretches. Um, J- Jacob Martin's on that team as well. So um, th- again, that was the game against Supreme was one of the few uh, like all Nebraska matchups. And it was a really physical game. Uh, there were not a lot of fouls called. And when they did, Supreme struggled to, to knock down their free throws, um, which really cost them. And um, Supreme was able to knock down some shots in the second half, or uh, Powerhouse was able to knock down some shots in the second half and pull away. But that was uh, Supreme Harms' only loss as well. Um, they, they had some, some good wins uh, as well, closed out the weekend, bounced back with a win over Beyond Ball, 24K. After that powerhouse loss, they beat Triumph Basketball, a team from Texas. Um, so overall, uh, pretty pretty good uh, weekend for them. Um, the 16 U's uh, for Supreme went three and one, uh, and playing really shorthanded. They they had six guys. They pulled up a a 15 U player to play with them. Um, Dane Jacobson uh, had, had one game where he was really good. When I was watching, Quinn Weatherholt had another when he was carrying the scoring load from Lincoln Northeast. Let me ask you something real quick about Dame. Um, you feel like he's built emotionally to kind of handle the – it's not a shadow because I don't want to think about it as a negative. The prowess of the family name. He he seems like he's well-equipped to take that on. Yeah, and – like he's not going to shrink because of it. You no, know? and yeah, Dane's definitely a gamer, and he's not. Uh, he's a little different than his brother in terms of um, skill set and the way he plays. He's kind of been more of a utility yeah. guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll go defend, rebound, assist. He can go make a cut, get to the bucket. This this summer, I definitely saw him step up more as like I'm going to go be the leading scorer type of guy, and that's what Ashton Greenwood's going to need a little bit more from him playing alongside Brooks Kissinger. Um, and, and Cougar Consum as kind of the returning starters there. He's got to step into that lineup and uh, provide a little bit more offensive firepower than he has previously, and he's certainly capable of that. He's just a real physical guard, um, can score in the post. Um, they like Supreme likes to invert their offense if they got the right matchups and let him go to work inside. Um, he's not afraid of the moment. I saw early in, earlier this month he hit a g- pull-up three game winner uh, against OSA Adidas Gold. Uh, in a really competitive game there. Uh, only three of the game, step back, knocked it down with a couple seconds to go. So um, overall, um, I, I think he, he's ready for it for sure. Uh, I guess um, one more shout-out, the OSA Adidas Gold 15s and OSA Elite Beck uh, 15s both went 3-1. and one. Presser for gold because they were down two of their best players with Nixon Ligori playing up on the 16s team, and Bernie Anderson didn't make the trip down there. Um, so you had Kyle Cannon uh, from Scott, Deacon Courtney from Ralston step up, and then OSA Elite Back went three and one. And uh, guy on that team I really like um, is tr- uh, Trent Krogman from uh, Papia, Papia South. South. Yeah, he's lo- he's intriguing. Like he's he's a guy. And he's going to be longer. just what they need too. Yeah. If he, playing alongside Maul Jaw with that dynamic backcourt, he's got to find find the weight room there over at Papio South. But he's got a chance to be pretty good down the stretch. Really good shot blocker. Uh, can step out and shoot threes and all over the offensive glass. Let me ask you something real quick before we get out of here. Other than Trace and Anderson and probably Jake Brack, who I think has elevated much better in July. His resume had a fantastic July against elite caliber competition. 
other than probably those two, is there another guy out there, 16, 17s, either or, that you think has elevated their profile as they get ready for this upcoming season? I think probably Jane Jackson falls into that. Um, I think he's ready for a, a bigger role for, for Bellevue West next season. And I know just talking to people, he definitely caught some attention between camps he attended, playing with ETG. Um, I know he caught the eye of the, the guy that I mentioned that uh, follows this stuff really closely. It's high on him. So he, he's probably one. Obviously, Alec Newton, I think, at the end of the stretch at a different level. Um, maybe not D1 necessarily there, but guy that's going to he's gonna be at the UNK camp um, this weekend. And um, so he, I think... Close, strong close to the finish is going to give himself some nice options here to choose for college. Expecting a huge year from Brack because they're, they're the odds on favorite to win state too. He looked, he's added some versatility to his game. Yeah, and it's good to see him playing with confidence. Like yes, I, I think uh, he's had a good strong close to the uh, to the to the summer here and now. Ready to step back with, with Scott and kind of be the lead guy there alongside J.J. Farron. Yeah, be a smooth transition as we get ready to head into football. That's Jacob Padilla. I'm ODB. This is Nebraska Preps postgame. Catch us next week.